At every ag meeting, somebody says, the main thing we ought to realize is we got to feed the world. We got to feed the world. We got to feed the world. We love the term. You know what? You should have trademarked it. Feed the world. Because at every ag meeting for the last 50 years, we've talked about feed the world. And we tell ourselves that there's going to be 10 billion people here. Here's the problem with that logic. First off, production always catches up. We got 7.6 billion people on earth today. 800 million of them are kind of hungry, maybe starving. 800 million of 7.6 are kind of hungry to starving. 20 years ago, it was 1 billion, meaning 200 million more, and the population was 6 billion. We put 1.6 billion more mouths on earth and decreased the number that are starving or hungry by 20% in the meantime. Production always catches up. The problem isn't production, it's economics. It's political, it's warlords that want to let their, look at Venezuela. Venezuela right now, people have lost, uh, the average Venezuelan, as of a year ago when I read an article, had lost 27 pounds. The average Venezuelan had lost 27 pounds. Is it because there's not enough food right up here? No, it's because of political issues. We've got to get over this whole thing about feeding the world because guess what? We're not even going to get to 9.7 billion people. I've been saying this for five years. Finally, I'm finding more resources that agree with my assessment. Empty Planet came out February 5th, written by a journalist and, and, and a population a, a social researcher. It went all over the globe and gave all sorts of compelling reasons why we actually are going to start losing population. The very day I read about that book, two days later, Wall Street Journal had an article about China. Demographers that predicted that China was going to have 2 billion people 50 years ago, all bunk. Guess what? China is going to start losing population in 11 years. The United States would have a negative population growth rate based on our reproductivity if it were not for immigration. Western Europe, losing population. Japan, 127 million people, predicted to have only 100 million people in 20 years. Did you just hear those numbers? <laughs> we're not gonna have to worry about feeding the world. The more advanced a society becomes, the more affluent a culture becomes, the less they breed. We've got a growing middle class. People in China right now, people in China right now could be having more babies. They had a one baby policy because they were terrified they were going to get overpopulated. You know what? They, they got rid of that three years ago. Guess what? Young couples are still just having one baby. They made the decision, eat better, have a car, maybe some air conditioning, or have 10 kids. Selfishly, I'm glad my parents didn't do that. <laughs> didn't have air conditioning. Our cars were kind of crappy, but they had me. <laughs> they didn't have a 10th one because you know what? You stick a hyperactive eight-year-old in the corner next to you on a cot. <laughs> That's birth control right there, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. Let's get past this feed the world mantra. I've been hearing it for a long time and I've been telling agriculture, you de you're worrying about the wrong thing. You know why we love telling ourselves that story? It plays to our strength. Our strength is producing a commodity and producing more of it every year because go on the, go on the world of corn.com as corn growers site and they love to talk about it. Man, oh man, do we grow the heck out of prox. Yes, we made, we made four more bushels of soybeans per acre than we did just three years ago. We love the story of Feed the World because it plays right into our strength. We're good at making lots of stuff, so we don't have to change. We just keep on making stuff. Well, guess what? Change is coming. That's what we need to grasp is that it's not about feeding the world 20 years from now because the world's going to have enough food.